Hello everybody, welcome here. It's Nicole from Sincerely Nicole Rose and welcome to another episode. It is really great to have you here. We're continuing with the series where I go through the Instagram posts I've been putting up and basically just go into more and more detail. So the one I'm going through today is the gospel is enough and this post means so much to me because recently I have and I say recently it's been a year now I've just realized how important the gospel is how important the truth is how important salvation is and not getting distracted by other things because in the end everything comes down to the one commandment that is made is go into the world and make disciples and we do that by sharing the gospel so there is only one answer we see to the turmoil in the world around us and the turmoil is is great you just have to open your eyes for a second watch one episode of the news to know that there is a lot of wild stuff going on in the world today and that answer, that singular answer that is the fix to all problems is the gospel of Jesus Christ it is always appropriate in every situation. It is the empathetic, loving, sympathetic, caring response to every issue we see in the world, no matter how polarized. We've seen the world lose its mind. Like literally, just just, just go into the news for five seconds. The world has lost its mind. Nobody can agree on anything anymore. Things that weren't even divisive have become divisive. Like what I'm talking about now, that the gospel is the only answer. This is a divisive topic. And it amazes me that this is a divisive topic because it shouldn't be. Um, the world will always try to de- tear down what we know to be good. We see culture informed by scripture and culture is not perfect. Let me draw that line here and now. Culture is not, nor will it ever be perfect. It is flawed. It is full of holes. It has problems, big problems, problems we need solutions to. Yes, end point, full stop. Don't disagree. But there are aspects to culture that are really, really good. And the world tries to tear that down. It says no free markets are bad communism. But we've, we've, we've seen history. We know what communism looks like. We've, we know about Russia with Stalin where more people, more Russians were murdered than in the Holocaust, than Jews in the Holocaust. Is that, is that not sad? Books, history, culture, art, it was burned because it did not fit the agenda. You look at China, China with their one child policy who are murdering babies in the womb on the regular. So the free market society, something we know to be good, is being torn down, being spat on. And as someone who's so grateful for her freedom, it breaks my heart because the system we live in allows us the freedom of religion, a freedom that is not permitted in certain countries. If you live in the Middle East, you can be executed for being a Christian. Same with China, same with Russia during Stalin's rule. I am grateful for the good things. And as we watch the world do this, there is only one thing that can restore. There is only one thing that can pick up the pieces. It is casually flicking off during the reeking of destruction it is going through and that is the gospel and this is this is what the good news is the good news is that jesus christ both fully man and fully god died on the cross taking the wrath of god upon himself then being buried for three days and rising again And he brought salvation to all who would repent and come to know him. I mean, eternal life where the only thing standing between us and Christ is our pride. 
is our unwillingness to (laughs) repent. Repent. I mean, this is what I love about the gospel. It, It is the most open message in the world. There are no prerequisites, no matter where you live, no matter who you are, no matter what you've done, you can come to Christ. There is just one prerequisite, and it is a choice we make, either to repent of our sin, I'm sorry, to repent of our sin and our sinful nature and to come to Christ, or to reject him because the cost of repentance was inconvenient or too high a cost for our minds to be okay with. And that is sad because Christ is the ultimate reward. So I've seen dialogues nowadays where people have said, stop preaching the gospel. Your gospel is not welcome here. And I feel now more than ever as believers, it's our job to stand up and say, no, our message is appropriate. And more than that, it is necessary in this situation. How can we accurately look at any situation if we are looking through our own eyes and not through the lens of scripture, through the lens of Christ? Not a cheap WWJD endorsing sin, turning the cheek, but rather digging into scripture and actually reading Jesus' words. Because I I hear people say this often, Jesus is way more gentle than Paul. When was the last time you read the Gospels? I'm sorry, Jesus is harsh. Jesus was not a social justice warrior. Jesus Jesus could not have been less interested in social justice. That was what the Jews wanted for him from him. They wanted him to come and rescue them from the oppression of Rome. What did he do? He said no, and he turned away from everything he was being tempted into, being asked to do. And instead, he went and did the most unlikely thing, and he died on a cross. The people who had revered him as Messiah rejected him when he refused to fulfill their narrative, but rather fulfilled the purpose of why God had sent him. So how I ended this post was, with a prayer and it is a prayer I pray often I don't like being humbled but I've been praying more and more and more asking the Lord to humble me because if he's if if I'm not being humbled by him then that's pretty dangerous isn't it that's pretty dangerous isn't it because then I'm just living according to my own pride that's not a good thing ever Pride comes before a fall. A proud heart rejects the Lord. No, no, no. So I'm going to read what I I wrote here. And it says, Lord, won't you remind us that a movement won't save us? Our political party and affiliations won't save us. Choosing a hill to die on won't save us. Being a good person won't save us. Only you can and only you will. There is none good by you. And what a privilege it is to know you. And that is my prayer more and more every day. Lord, remind me, remind me, remind me. Won't you keep the main thing, the main thing? Lord, won't you keep the main thing, the main thing over and over and over till I sound like a broken record because... I need to remember this. I need him to impress this upon my heart in such a way that it'll never leave me. And then with this comes, oh Lord, won't you give me the courage to share the gospel even in situations where I know it will be rejected and where I know it will cost me because it is necessary to add to the conversation. So I hope this has encouraged you because we hear often, oh, would you just be quiet? You can't have that belief. It's informed by the Bible. No, the gospel is enough. And as Paul says in Romans, we are not ashamed of the gospel of Christ because the gospel is life and life in abundance. So that's my encouragement to you and to hold on to it, remembering the goodness, the kindness, the loving mercy of God in every single situation. 